right people into my life um, at the right moment, right? Like, like I'm a mom. I can't go to a Bible school, <laughs> yeah. you know, but with the help of Instagram, I feel like I have so many people that I can ask questions and they can answer and, and kind of like help me, you know, see the revelations, learn, like, learn the Bible and so on. And so you've been that person. And, um, and today I kind of don't want to waste too much time because this hour passes by so quick, but today, um, I really wanted to talk about the seeking God and just intimacy with the Holy spirit. When you were doing a live, and I told you this, when you were doing a live with, uh, Yarosh, you kind of touched a little bit of your testimony and you mentioned something that, um, I guess you could say. And I think many, many other people, when people, uh, you said that you got frustrated frustrated at one point while searching for God because you didn't feel like you were either receiving answers or finding him the way you thought or and just so on and so on. And so I really want you to, to kind of um, like tell me, tell us your testimony, how you came to God in in like a short version and and kind of not miss this part of what you said because when i posted this on my instagram so many people wrote back and said oh my gosh this is how i feel like uh, i want us like i'm searching for god and i feel like and again there's no formula but i feel like so many people get frustrated especially when they hear other people talk about, oh, I hear God. Oh my gosh, I had this kind of encounter. Oh, this and this happened. God spoke to me. And people, like when I'll say like God spoke to me, a lot of the times like, how? How do you know it's God? Like, yeah. what do you mean he spoke to you? You heard an audible voice? And so like all these questions, I think sometimes people are like almost embarrassed to say, but it's this is just how it is. And I think in like a lot of Slavic churches, we weren't really thought that. It was always the prophets who heard the voice of God. So I really, really want you to share that testimony because obviously, you know, it's the realization that we are the sons and daughters. And that's a big part of knowing that you like you can speak to your dad. You don't need a permission. You speak to your dad. So share your testimony, Alex. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me. OK, uh, because my camera is kind of like I can hear you. OK. Um, so I was born in a family of, uh, of 12, my mom and dad, they have 12 kill, uh, children, seven girls and five boys. And I happen to be right in the middle of it. I'm a sixth child in the family. And before, like my oldest brother is a pastor in Alaska. And then I have all the girls and then me. So, and then after me, there is, an, there is more girls. So I pretty much just grow up between girls. So maybe like, that's why I understand them a little bit. But you can never understand girls, right? But <laughs> if you grow up with them, you kind of, you kind of know. Especially that I have three kids and three girls, so I'm really thankful to God that God is like, He shaped me in the way of uh, yeah. kind of coming with, with with girls. Um, me growing up as in a Christian family, and um, my mom's dad, he was a, a deacon in a Baptist church, and my 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 dad's side. Uh, I think, I think his dad uh, become Christian during the war, uh, World War Two. Mm -hmm. uh, so my dad grew up in a Christian family as well. Uh, but my mom was my mom grew up in a Baptist family, and like I said, my grandpa is a my grandpa is. A, I never see, I never saw him. He died like a long time ago, right right before I was born. And um, he was a deacon in a Baptist church, and he was preacher, you know. And I look like him a lot, like, like a lot. I have pictures of him. And my mom been telling me this quite often. She's like, when you do something, like you do something that's not right and I have to punish you. It's so like when I like get the belt or like something else, like to, to spank you, but it's like I couldn't do it. It looks like it looks like I'm spanking my own dad, you know, she's so like when I look at your face, like it's my, it's my dad. Uh, so many things in my life, they uh, got slide up like. I was like that child that my mom really cared about me. And she's like, Sasha, 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 you know, like everything's for me. And it's a good thing. I'm going to have a, I'm going to, I already told my mom, uh, they're going to do an interview with her, her life side. Like, I don't want to talk about myself. I want her perspective as a mother. 
like how I was born, how, how everything happened. It was supernatural birth for my mom. Like I was born yeah. with, without causing any pain to my mom. I was born like in a couple of seconds. She comes to the hospital. She just said, uh, she told them like, oh, I'm, I'm giving birth. They're like, yeah, yeah, maybe another 20, 30 minutes. She's like, I'm done. They're like, what? He comes in and with no pain, with no nothing, no epidural or anything like that. She just give a birth like that. Because somebody told her, it's an interesting story about my mom a little bit. But uh, somebody told her, Vera Dmitruk, I don't know if anybody familiar with her. That's her friend. And she told my mom that you can actually pray in tongues. And you can give her birth without without having any pain. Mom was like, "What?" So she tried that, and that happened when I was born. And then after that, it didn't work out. <laughs> she had six more kids after me, but it didn't work out. And here's my brother Serge on here. Serge Mikhailuk, eighty-seven. Uh, so it's my younger brother. Uh, so my story is: when I was growing up, I was always at the church. Like back in the days, they didn't have a church building, so they were gathering at people's houses. Mm -hmm. And our house was big enough to gather like 200 feet, 200 people. So we, we had like Sunday services at, at our house. And my mom was moving prophetic. Uh, she has a gift of prophecy. So she, people always come to, to pray for her. She always like, she wasn't a prayer. That's her lifestyle. And that kind of, that's that, why I'm talking about this is because that's the roots. That's how I, how I got it. So I always grow up being in prayer. Like she didn't, she didn't go in the closet and pray with people. She's like, get all the kids and like, let's play, let's pray together. Man, I'm so anxious. I don't know about you, but like, I feel the Holy Spirit so much right now. Even before I went live, I'm like <laughs> excited for this. Yeah. Like I'll maybe I'll later, I'll show this, but my phone um, holds there at the wristband that they would give us on the Holy Spirit conference and okay. hundred generation. That's what the that's what the wristband that's holding my phone to the tripod. It says Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. Yeah, so that, that, that's why. But that's that's probably why. Maybe. Um, so I grew up known. I was grew up Christian always. Like I knew the prayer. I know power of the prayer. We have so many miracles. My mom was healed from cancer, breast cancer, in 1981. She comes to the doctors and they're like, "What happened?" She's like. I be prayed and it's gone. They're like, no way, there is no God. Tell us what you did. It's like, well, you don't have to believe me, but that's what happened. God healed me. Yeah. Uh, so they have so many testimonies. So I kind of grew up in supernatural. We knew, we knew God answers the prayers. We knew how the gift operating and we knew the power of the prayer. So how my mom spends the time, how she wakes up till this day, she wakes up like four o'clock in the morning and spend an hour of prayer like every morning. So how and did you we, come to God? Um, like I said, growing up as a Christian, but the, uh, at 16 years old, I was already by 16 years. You spent by 16 years of age. I already read Bible like five times, and then I was like in missionary trips. I'm going to villages and preaching gospel, and that is another reason why that happened to my life because of my mom. Uh, because when she was, oh, I was just leaving for mom to tell the story. Um, so 16, I got water baptized and I received the Holy Spirit. It's interesting how I received it too, because uh, they had a prayer. And before before the water baptism, they have this prayer who wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So we, we were in line and, you know, the, the pastor just goes and prays for people. And the guy just goes, baptize, get, get baptized, get baptized, get baptized, skips me and get baptized. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the same row with them. Like, why, why you skip me? Like, what's going on? And I said, God, what happened? And as soon as I did that, I started speaking in tongues. Wow. Uh, so I'm like, why? Why you skip me? <laughs> uh, because I was like being, um, so growing up, my, my family is like a traditional family. And growing up, knowing like uh, you have to be like spending time in a, in a word and in a prayer. It's like a religious practice more than a relationship with God. Yeah. Like I have so much knowledge, but I didn't understand how it's operated, how it, how it can be useful in my life. Like, I can answer questions, but, like, when it comes to um, uh, practical ministry, like, oh, yeah, that's how Jesus did it. Have you ever done it? Like, no, but I know exactly how to do it. But why yeah. you never done it? And I still grow up in that mindset. Uh, so, <coughs> sorry. Let me ask the kingdom, kingdom-minded cat. Get to okay. the part. I, I want you to share the part of, like, how you were seeking God and then you 
went away. Like, I feel like that's a very, very important part. So at 16 years of age, I came to America. In, 19, in 1998, I was 16. And we came to America. I was on fire. I was like, I got invited to preach at churches, like Wakursky Church. Like, that's my uh, my uncle was the second pastor there. So it's like, Alex, let's go to the preach. Let's go to the prayers. Let's go to this. I'm, I'm a guy, like, like 16 year old. I want to see what America is all about. So I have my cousins. They show me how to drink. They show me how to hang out. They show me, like, different things. I'm not blaming them. I made that choice, but like, just because I was interested, like, Hey, this is a new country. You know, you have to learn everything. You have to learn the language. You have to learn the, you know, everything about this country. So that's kind of like, that's led me down and away from God. I mean, I, I was always in church. I just not, I was not interested in God as much as I, as I did before. So before what I did is, um, or like bef- not before I came to America, like I was in America, I was doing this, practicing this, praying every uh, one hour or more in the morning, like every day. And then if I miss a day, then I have like, man, what, what should I do now? I have to repent. And I was just that the religious mindset. But you were seeking um, God. I was seeking God seriously because I spent uh, time with him every day. Like I dedicated my time, dedicated my life to it. But the, the reason... Uh, I fell and slid away from it because I was like, God, I've been doing this for like years. It's not like I've been doing it for a week or two. And then I'm like, God, what about, you know, why nothing happens? But it's like years. So I'm for not- years you were feeling like you were searching for God and you did not find him. Like it was um, just some, like you didn't feel his presence or, or like what, what did you feel like you didn't find that you backslid? Oh, I feel I feel his presence. Um, I felt when God shows up to the room, like I, I can experience his presence. But when I was what I was um, praying about and asking about, that's that's what that's what threw me off. Uh, because I'm like, God, you're here. You give me like so much knowledge and understanding, and I have so many prophetic words that would be like doing a lot of things. And I'm like, okay, God, let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, give me a gift. Give me this. And nothing happens. God is like developing me, but, uh, but I'm like, so I want to more for gifts than God Himself, basically. Yeah. So I was look. That's that's what happened when um, I came back to God, right? <clears throat> so I was I was I like taking baths. I don't know hot tubs. It's hot tub and sauna. It's my it's my life. Uh, so I was in the hot tub and I was listening to one of the Andre Shapoval uh, sermons. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the time when I slide back. Okay. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm interested anymore. I try this. I dedicate years to it to seek God. I'm like, and he didn't give me nothing. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I was I was baptized in the Spirit. Yes, I feel his like Murashki and presence and this this. But I'm like, I I knew there is something more. I know it's a lot more in God, but I didn't experience it. So yeah. I got, I got stuck somewhere for years on the same spot, and I'm doing the same thing, and I, I I'm stuck. So I just got disappointed and got into drinking. I didn't smoke. But I got into drinking, drinking, and like just hang out and watch movies, and you know, just uh, just life like that, lukewarm life. Um, but then, right there in the top, I was laying down, and the word just, God just spoke through me, through Andre, and His word just like light up the fire again in my spirit. And I'm like, there is something more. I shouldn't. Ha- I shouldn't have quit. I need to go back. Because I lost about four years of my life, but I just said I don't care anymore. If you want to use me, come and get me. Wow. I'm not gonna pursue you anymore. Like I tried already. I already run after you. I didn't get nothing from it. So you want it? Come get it. Um, so my life turned away 180 degrees from that moment. And wow. I said, God, I'm gonna pursue you again. And the, the words that God spoke to me is like, Why did you stop seeking me? I'm like, what do you mean? I was seeking you the whole time. He's like, no, you were not seeking me. You were seeking my hand. Wow. What can I give, what I can give you? And if my hand was empty, you thought my heart is empty and evil or angry for you. Wow. But it's not true. God knows better when to give us when we're ready then. And I think it's so easy to get stuck. Like, I think it's so easy. Like, I've had moments like that too. Like, you encounter God and you enjoy his presence and him alone for like a month or two. And then you're like, okay, God, let's do this. Like, and then you get a prophetic word that God wants to use. And you're just like, okay, when? And God's like, not yet at all. Yeah. 
And it's so easy to get like stuck in that, you know? I feel like God knows so much better when to use us than when like we think we're ready. We think this is the time, like God, I mean, this is like, I, I feel like I've had moments where I was like, God, it's not like I'm doing this for myself. Like, this is for your glory. Like, don't you want, like, here I am available. Like, send me, Lord. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, almost like blaming yeah. it, putting it on God. That's why many people ask me questions about, like, I got disappointed. I don't feel yeah. bad anymore. He's not answering me. I don't feel he's, like, he wants to hear me or do anything with me. I'm like, I know exactly what you're going yeah. through. I know exactly. I mean, Alex, I've had times where I was in like whatever, like what you people call the wilderness. Like I'm not an angry person, but like, and I've said this before, like I've had time where I would go in the secret place and I would get so angry. Like, I'm like, where are you? Like, I'm right here. I'm a mom. I'm sacrificing my time. Like I could be chilling right now, you know, like while my baby naps or something like literally anger and i didn't like now i realized that that will, that's what was inside of me and it was just getting exposed like god is teaching me patience god is like molding me and like stripping away things but at that no, moment i thought it was like like what is wrong with you where are you no. <laughs> like you're looking for people i'm right here and you're just like over there chilling <laughs> like what are you doing um so i think like uh how did you how do you feel like uh, the second time around that you came that you came to God? Like, what was different that didn't get you frustrated anymore? I understood. Um, when the same sentence when God spoke to me is like, "You look at my hand," and through that, <clears throat> sorry about that. Okay. Because I was looking at His hand, it's like you got a wrong expression of who I am. Like, if you look at my eyes, if you look at my face, if you seek me in my face, you will know how much I love you. Like, through your eyes, I, I mean, you know how they say, like, eyes are the windows of the soul. Yeah. Like, you can look in the eyes and you see what's going on in the side of the person. So God is, God is telling me, like, look at my eyes. I'm always love you. I'm always open for you. I always want to bless you. And the reason why you're not getting something in your life is not because I'm angry with you. It's not because I'm ple not pleased with you. It's not because you're sad me and I don't want to give you something. Yeah. I'm always available. I always want to give you. As long as you start seeking me for who I am, not for what I can give you. And yeah. that blow me away. Wow. Because I was always, I was praying this the stupid prayers. And I'm like, God, I thank you for not answering them all. I'm like I you think in heaven. I think yeah. in heaven I'll be saying hallelujah and holy <laughs> and thank you, thank you, just because you didn't answer all my prayers, you know. You know it like uh oftentimes like people use examples of like um like kids and family, like dad and, and the child and the relationship between a father and a son, let's say. I think a lot of the times when you look at um a child who is still like young, let's say to like a teenage year, they, they look at dad as like to get something like dad is the one that who gives me things, who provides me things that like, for me, I think I started like looking at my parents differently when I got married, when I was already like, like realizing a lot of the stuff, like, I love you just because you like, just because of who you are, you know what I mean? Not because of what I can get from you. And I think it kind of represents the same thing of what God was trying to tell you in a way that you just love me because I'm your dad, because I love you. I loved you first. And in a way, you know, it's like when a child is born, parents love them first before they even realize. <laughs> so that's so, that's so good. That's so good. You had anything else to add to that? Yeah, so no matter no matter what you go through your life, God is love, is always love. That's the fundamental uh, way or, or like the thing that you have to put as a foundation of your belief in God yeah. is love, no matter what you're going through. Even if it's hard, it seems like God is forsaking you. Even Jesus on the cross says, Father, why are you forsaking me? Yeah. You know, why are you, why you kind of forget about me? Um so when I, when we come to God, I'm like I did come to God the second time. Uh, the way I changed my prayer room, my prayer, my my whole prayer life changed. 
I do believe that's like fundamental, like a prayer closet. It has to be in your life. It has to be. I'm not saying like it's not. It is. Because they're in a private room with God, you will get a greater revelation of who he is. And, and then on that revelation, you would know how to live your life, not just in a prayer room. Yeah. See, like I did before, I was in a prayer room and I was screaming to God. I was praying in tongues and loud and like, <coughs> I was just doing all that. I think I was doing for God. But God was not pleased with my worship because I was there to use him. I was not there to please him. Wow. And I was I'm like, my God, look at me. He's like, this relationship is not going anywhere. You're not, you don't want to be intimate with me. You just want to use me. Wow. You don't want to open your heart to me, but you want to have a pleasure with me. Wow. Like, you want to know Jesus in the flesh. Like, you can't like, trick Jesus. Like disciples did. Like, be with us, feed us, protect us, yeah. do this for us. And Jesus is like, you know what? When I'm going to leave, you guys are going to start fasting. Because <laughs> you're going to have to go through this. Yeah. You're going to have to develop this. When I'm gone, you're going to have to develop this relationship with me. Man, it's just not going to fall on you. It's not just going to happen by itself. This is uh, like a wow. growth. Like like Mark said yesterday, this is not one day revelation. Yeah. This is a process. This is your life. I think that's where people, <laughs> I mean, that's so powerful what you said. It's like so simple, but yet so powerful. I think this is where people lose it. It's like literally like we want now. And we think that, like, I didn't have any guilt by asking and being angry with God because I felt like, like, again, like I was saying, like, this is something like I'm not asking things for myself. I'm not asking, like, give me this, like all these earthly things. I'm asking things like spiritual things. Like I'm asking things that you said to ask. Like you said, ask to prophesy, ask to heal, ask to this. <laughs> so it's like, it's almost like gets in your head where you get so frustrated. That you're like, God, I'm asking of the right things and you're not giving it to me. And that's where people get frustrated and like move away or go back to being lukewarm because they're not realizing that it's a process. No matter what, it's a process. You have to grow up. Um, I had, I, I had this question, because um, you're kind of already talking about this, but first step, I know this is not a like a, you know, formula thing, but what would you say is the first step to focus on and not get overwhelmed? Like, what is the, like, what would you say to a person who's like, I love the Lord, I know the Lord, but I just like, I want to get intimate with him because there's, you can get so overwhelmed. Like, I remember I had a time where I'm like, where do I read? I want to read this. I want to read Psalms. I, and then somebody will post something. I'm like, man, that looks good. I want to read that chapter. And then I want to listen to this sermon. And then I want to pray like this. And then I want to pray this prayer. There's so many like prayers you could pray that I would get over, like my head would just explode. And oh my God, like, I, like, I don't even know what to pray. Like where, you know what I mean? Like how to even realize where you're at to, so you kind of going step by step and not, getting overwhelmed and not getting too much in your head. So, you know what I mean? Like, where would you, how would you tell a friend to start seeking God? I think everything starts from a simple, simple obedience. And Jesus said those three steps. And include like practical ways that you can like. Yeah. Jesus said really practically, <laughs> deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. Like, you want to be my disciple? You want to see what I do and how it's done? You want to end up where I'm going? Deny yourself. Um, we see I have so many miracles, signs, wonders, you know. God is doing a lot of things. They all come out out of intimacy with God. They all come out after you deny yourself and be obedient to God. what God wants you to do. Sometimes God speaks to your word. That's not something you want to say. But you have to be obedient. Yeah. And if you did use the obedience for the glory of God, his glory will show up. But what about even before? Because I think before even God will ask you to do anything and to obey, like he's going to have to develop you. Like, what would you say to a person who's not like, who's just searching for God, them, like for himself, like they want to hear God, like they, they're going in a secret place. And they don't know what they're doing. Like, they don't know where to start. 
Like I'm, 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 st- I'm telling, I'm, I'm talking about practical. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like for me, I always say this because I feel like God highlight, highlighted it to me so many times for the uh, last two months. Um, and it was enter my gates with thanksgiving and my courts with praise. And so for me, I felt like God was like, like it was literally like even right before this Corona thing, um, like that verse just kept sticking out to me and sticking out to me. And I just felt like. I kept asking God, what pleases you? Like, like every person has, um, has like a preference, right? Of what, the, yeah. how they like to relax or what pleases them. Like if my husband asked me like, babe, how would you ever, like, how would you, what would relax you? If you could do anything in a day, like I would, I would say something that pleases me. And I felt like God was saying that to me that like, what pleases me is your praise and your thanksgiving. Like that's how you enter to my courts, and that was for me for like that season. So how would what would you say to somebody else? Like, I first, think the problem. Yeah. I think the problem lanes and uh, how we put the question. I want to hear your voice, but when you say God speak to me, like I don't know if you guys hear the difference. I want to hear your voice, or you just saying God speak to me. Uh, there is a prophet in the Old Testament. He was one of the guards on, on, a, one, on a tower and a wall. And he's standing on top of the tower and he said, I was standing there and waiting. What would he say inside of me? So it's about surround, uh, like being sold out to God. Like give up with your desires. If you want to be used by God, your desires needs to go away. Like your idea of a ministry. Well, your idea of how it's going to happen, it's like 99% it's not going to happen that way. God likes yeah. to surprise people. So when, like the way you picture things, it might not never happen that way. But you've been praying like, God, do this way, do this way. I want to hear you to approve what I'm already planted. Like this is yeah. the plan. Give me your approval. God is like, I'm, I'm quiet because I have nothing to do with that plan. This is not my plan. Wow. If you listen to me, I will show you my plan. And then everything will work out. And I like this example, and I like that you're always using this example as a family, as um, I believe that's why God even created a man. Yeah, that's why I always it's say to show, that. It's to show him how to be united in unity with God. Like when you grow growing up as a child, you think God is always like this good daddy. He always carrying you. He always feeding you. He always gives you everything you wanted it. So your understanding, if I use that Bogoslovia, it's like, oh, God is so good. God is love. God is grace. God is everything. Yeah. Because you're a child. And God until cannot deal with you. Until you reach age three, four, five. <laughs> no, yeah, but then when you become a teenager, that's, that's, the, that's the part when I fell. Yeah. Is, <coughs> You know how teenagers are. I've been one. And as you already you're so smart. You know everything. You're smarter than your dad. You already have your life figured that out. Like you already know everything. And you come to to the to, to, to Heavenly Father with the mindset of a teenager. And he's like, you just need a spanky spanky, that's what you need. Yeah. And like, because when you come to me, and you bring your understanding that you're so smart. You already know everything. You're way smarter than your parents and grandparents. You know everything by age of 15. But God is like, son, you don't know nothing. If you accept the truth that you don't have nothing and know nothing, I will bless you. Yeah. But because you come up to me and you're saying like, I see everything. I know everything. God is like, Jesus is saying to them, you just tell me you're blind and I will heal you. Yeah. Just tell me that you're blind and I will heal you. But then you grow up out of that stage and you become a father or a mother and you have your own kids. And you look at them and you're like, wow, how my life changed. <laughs> like my father is not always love. I mean, he always loved, but he's not like baby me and like yeah. carrying me as a baby. <laughs> there, is a time when, when, there is a time when God will put you in place and say, listen, that's not how, that's how it's done. I have a different will for you. I have different things for you. And you were like, what? God is punishing me. God is angry with me. God doesn't like me. He, did you see that happen to me? Man, God is not good. God is angry. God is, he's right. He's totally against me because you're a teenager. That's why you need to say, Lord, I'm blind. I don't see nothing. Open my eyes. 
Wow. And he will do it right now. I feel good right now. Wow. <sighs> he will wow. do it for you. Wow. Just you have to acknowledge like you don't know nothing. For me, it was so hard to do it. Like it took four years because I was so stubborn and so self-righteous. Because I'm like, I did everything. I know Bible. I went through school. I have degrees. I have this. I have that. I have diplomas. And I'm like, I already, I already figured out God in my mind. And I posted a couple of times on Instagram. Our understanding of God and for information about him is black in the revelation of who he is. Wow. Because you still fit with information in your mind. They have no room for revelation to even come. Because you already said, I know everything. If you said, I know everything, you automatically close in the doors for anything new to come. Yeah. And that's when you slide out. That's why Paul writes and says, renew your mind daily, daily. You say like, God, what's new? Tell me something. I want to learn something new. Never say, I know everything. You know? Would you say, me, like, uh, would you say, when, like, <laughs> when you're asking God that, when you're telling God that, um, like what I've kind of learned and still learning is that like waiting is the key. And yeah, a lot so of I want to speak about waiting, yeah. Like waiting is so hard. I almost feel like sometimes dying to yourself could be easier than waiting. Like <laughs> I mean for I'm speaking on my behalf. Like waiting is hard because you want to go in the a secret room, you're like, okay, Lord, I have 45 minutes. Speak to me. And you're waiting like 25 minutes and then you're like, you know, like you're just kind of like, okay, I'm like I'm not hearing anything. Nothing's happening. Bye. You know, and, and you, you leave like, man, God wasn't speaking. I think a lot of the times like we see in, in the, in the, in the Bible, it says those who wait on the Lord, you know, and it's like, I, I think at one point I was like, literally like, uh, Googling every Bible verse that talked about waiting or people <laughs> waiting <laughs> to just like make myself realize that, okay, this is normal. It's normal. And I think a lot of people leave soon and now end up hearing from God. And then they're like, okay, God's not speaking to me. That's exactly what happened to me. <clears throat> so like you said, you get, uh, like you pursuing God, you push him in. You like, you so after him, you think that you are so after him, but you actually after what he can do for you. Um, that's what I'm speaking about myself. I'm not judging anybody. I can judge myself as much as I want. So <laughs> praise God. Um, so I was pursuing God the way I was thinking. But because I was pursuing him with the wrong angle, I got the wrong understanding about him. Wow. I didn't. I was not honest straight with him. I was like, you know, this is who I am. You know, let's, 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 you know, use me. Let's, you know, but I, I wanted like, that's what lukewarmness, I'm going to answer that question. What lukewarmness is, is you want to use him, but have nothing to do with him. That's lukewarmness. Like you don't want to be obedient. You don't want to be united with him. You don't want to be one with him, but you want him to use for your pleasures. Yeah. You don't want to die for yourself, but you want Jesus to do something for you without you doing anything back for him. That's lukewarmness. Well, we're probably going to do one more life about lukewarmness because it's a huge topic. Yeah. And I know you like that topic. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so I'm going to say about waiting. Waiting, it's not sitting on a sofa and waiting until God's going to call me. Like one day, one day, I'm going to be a pastor. One day, I'm going to go on missionary trips. One day, I'm going to do this and this. You're never going to do that. Waiting, it's like walk, the, on, a, walk on a treadmill. Develop yourself. Waiting, it's not laziness. Waiting, it's a hard work. Not because it's hard to wait for something, because you do have to develop yourself. That's good. Um, when you're angry, it's okay to be angry. Bible says it's okay. Just don't fall into sin yeah. when you get angry. Yeah. That when you're angry, like we even say, like you're angry with God. You gotta understand that because you don't understand what you're doing. Because like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I could be on like, Pato and you're like, I understand that. It's like, it's okay. I understand you, but you're still not going to get your way. I'm, I have something different for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so That's this good. anger is supposed to come up as a zeal for God. Yeah. When he's so angry, it should transfer to zeal and pursue him personally. But when he got angry, be like, you know what? I've been developing myself. I was waiting and waiting. Now, 
I'm just gonna, you know, relax and wait for you for the time to come. Like you say, oh, that is not your time yet or whatever. Okay, I'll wait for the time. But 